Test, test, test. Hi everyone, I'm Sal Dalia, and in this video you're gonna follow me on a short trip to Japan. In a mix between vlog and tutorial, I'm gonna try and give you some tips and tricks in a way that I work for more personal work, but also for client work. To give you a little backstory of why I'm here. Right at the beginning of the pandemic, I was hired by the Japanese Tourism Board to shoot a commercial for the Achimura village in Nagano Prefecture. It's a beautiful village in the countryside, surrounded by mountains. Of course, I couldn't wait to come here to Achi and experience, you know, how beautiful this place is. But as everybody knows, the pandemic went on for months and I couldn't come here. So that's when they pitched me the idea of directing the commercial in remote. So what I did is basically create a storyboard based on photos and location scouting, you know, done by someone else. And then a few Zoom calls where I would direct some young filmmakers to shoot, you know, exactly in the way that I wanted and with the gear that I wanted and picking the right models and content for the commercial. At the end of the shoot, they shipped the hard drive with all the footage to me and I edited everything in New York. The final result left my client very happy. And that was it for me. I just experienced the Achi village, you know, through digital footage and I only dreamed to come here one day. Fast forward three years later and Saigo san reached out to me not even two months ago saying, would you like to come to the Achi village and finally experience this beautiful place? And of course I said yes. In this video, I'm gonna go through some of the events and activities while I'm here in Japan. After a 14 hour flight and 13 hour time zone jump, I enjoy my first sunrise in Japan from the window. It was 5 a.m. in the morning in Tokyo, but with the jet lag in full effect, I couldn't wait to go to the city and start shooting some photos. My weapon of choice is the Sony Alpha A7R5 with the Leica Sunmilux 50mm 1.4. It's my favorite combo for street photography. My first stop is the famous Shibuya Scramble Crossing. It's great because of the mix of people and cultures crossing the street in an organized choreography that happens regularly every few minutes. It gives you so many different opportunities to catch beautiful stories and unique characters. I always like to start with details. It's almost like a warm-up for me and my camera. You don't have to track focus and you can test settings based on the light that you have in that area. After that, the real work can begin. History photography is all about observation and trial and error. Start with a spot and see how many shots and stories you can capture. Then look for characters or for different perspectives, like a low angle. Even by just standing in one spot, you can capture different stories and wait for subjects to walk inside your shot and create compositions for you. Sometimes a character you like might walk in and if you are discreet enough, you can try and get multiple shots. You always have to be ready to press that shutter. And if you're in manual focus like me, to turn that ring and freeze the action. When I'm shooting at 1.4, I always keep a very high shutter speed to freeze the action. It makes focusing harder, but also very rewarding when you nail the focus. An opposite technique that works well in very fast-paced situation is the slow shutter. By switching to a 50th or 40th of a second, you can try and track the subject. Your subject is in focus, but all around everything is moving and gives a better field of speed. I also look for group shots, interesting compositions, reflections, and when I find a background I like, I wait for a great subject to walk in and fill the space. As a filmmaker, I always take video, and the best way to change the mood is by doing some slow motion and play with music. If you want to take some photos or time lapse from above, there is a Starbucks on the second floor overlooking the street. While I was enjoying a fresh drink, I had my Insta360 Go taking some time lapse. Then I also took some photos. 
if you have enough resolution, like for my a7R5, you can zoom and crop and find many stories within a single frame. Another technique I like is to shoot from the car window. With a very high shutter speed and mechanical shutter, you can freeze a moment even when the car is running fast. You never know what kind of stories you can capture. Just observe with your eyes what's up ahead and then prepare your camera to capture the best frame possible. You can also shoot in burst mode, but it's a fun challenge to be quick and capture everything with one shot. My next stop is maybe the most touristy spot in Tokyo, the Sensoji Temple, the oldest in town. It's always packed with tourists, but I don't always avoid that. The mass of people can make a location look alive. This market has many side streets with beautiful pocket lights, which means great photo locations. At night, the best place for photos is definitely Shinjuku. You have colors, culture, food. It's easy to get lost in all the little alleys. Just make sure to go easy with the sake. In the morning, after some data managing, it's time to finally drive to Achi. Depending on traffic is around 3-4 hours from Tokyo. While stopping for lunch, I tested the Google Translate camera feature. It's a great tool, one in Japan, that I highly suggest to anyone traveling to foreign countries. From my drone footage, you can see how immersed in nature the village is. The hotel where I'm staying was built over a natural hot spring. Its name is Hirugami Onsen Kyokichiya. The style is very traditional Japanese. Cozy, clean and comfortable. The best part is probably the food, traditional Japanese. Everything is cooked fresh and presented in a very elegant way. You almost don't want to touch the food and ruin the look of the table. I woke up at 5 a.m. In part for the jet lag, but also because I want to try the hot spring. And the only way I can use my camera is that nobody else is there. Remember that in Japan, to use a hot spring, you have to be completely naked. No towel or bathing suit. Once you get over the initial awkwardness, you just relax and enjoy the beauty of the hot spring. All refresh, it's time to start exploring. We went to Tsumagojuku, one of the best preserved Edo era town in Japan. To give you an idea, most of these houses were built in the 18th century. Now it's inhabited, but with plenty of shops for tourists. In the absence of a model, what I like to do is to try and create a connection with the local people. Okay, right here. If you approach gently, you often find people willing to get their portrait taken. <laughs> it's always nice to create moments like that and to show them your photo right away. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't put any makeup. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> In my opinion, these photos tell more stories than the architecture or details. Also, it's important to ask if they want their photo via email or social. Often people don't have professional photos taken of themselves, so you will give them a nice gift in return of their kindness. <laughs> At the top of the town is the temple. I love visiting temples, but make sure to always ask if you're allowed to shoot photos. Not every temple will allow photos, and it's important to respect the local requests and laws. 
Our next stop is the Tenryu River, where locals have been river rafting for over 100 years. So now it's our turn to try. It's a bumpy ride, so I can't bring any loose cameras. I chose the DJI Action because I can strap it to my chest and record high quality footage without the fear of getting wet or bump into anything hard. We will split in two inflatable rafts and after a brief safety instruction, we are ready to jump in the water. At the beginning, you have time to relax, take some photos and learn how to count in Japanese so that you can row in sync with your boatmates. After that, the current starts to get stronger and you need to row hard to avoid taking a bath into the river. The DJI performed very well. The footage is crisp with great dynamic range, but my favorite aspect is the stabilization, considering how much movement was on the raft. Next stop of the day is the Kurashiro waterfall. Great spot for me to fly my drone and overlook the beauty of the valley. Tourists and locals come here to see the waterfall, but also to follow a tradition and write a wish on a paper plate. It's said that if you throw the plate towards the waterfall, the wish will come true. The last stop of the day is the Shinano Ihei Kojioin Temple. A quiet spot for prayer and meditation on top of the mountain. Here you have the opportunity to ring the ancient and beautiful bell. The sounds resonates throughout the whole valley. Back in Tokyo for my last day, I wanted to see the city from above and take some photos. There are different options, but the Tokyo Tower is the oldest in town, and I like the historical side of it. There are two decks. The main deck is around 500 feet, while the top deck is around 800 and was renovated in 2018. I always start with my main lens, in this case the 35mm 1.4. It's good to get acquainted with the landscape and pick the basic settings. You can take advantage of the dynamic range of your sensor and play with colors and mood in post-production. The only variety with this lens can be created by changing composition. But in my opinion, the photos become repetitive and boring after a little bit. That's why in this situation, I always bring a telephoto zoom, specifically the 7200 2.8 GM2, which is lightweight and stabilized. With this lens, it's easier to play with composition while shooting landscape. And it's perfect to compress far away subjects and make them look closer. So even with a wide and spread out city like Tokyo, you can make photos where buildings look closer to each other and fill the frame better. I always try to be aware of my surroundings because even if I'm shooting landscape, I can always find interesting shots around me. And with the 7200, you can punch in and get closer to the subject. Other shots I look for when I'm in the sky are a top-down view, subject with interesting texture and contrast, beautiful architecture, composition using highways and streets. Sometimes the highest point is not the best. With a telephoto, you want to go lower so that the building and the foreground are more present in the frame and your shot feels more packed and less flat. Mm -hmm. 
my short trip comes to an end and I'm heading back to the airport. The Tokyo Neda Airport is one of the prettiest I ever visited. It's not just aesthetic, but it's also very well organized and tourists can find great last minute gifts to bring back home. I'm on my way back home to New York, but I really hope I can come back to Japan soon. There's still so much to see and discover in this country. I hope you learned something from this video. I most definitely did.